Hey guys, this is Cody over at Dead Free MTG. Um, I have decided to do some opening videos. So first and foremost, with a new site coming out, I decided to go out and purchase myself a Throne of Eldrin pre-release kit. One thing I will say is that I normally get hosed on a lot of things like this. Um, I definitely try. I've had a few good openings in my life. I've been playing Magic for about 10 years, all in all, but that does not stop me from having some pretty terrible packs. Um, so how I do things is we have hit hose or pass. Now if we get a hit, I'm thinking probably over $10. Hose is going to be probably like bulk kind of thing, anything under a dollar, and meh is anything that just kind of falls in between. Um, so how we're gonna do it is we're gonna open it up and since it is pre-release weekend, all of these prices are super inflated. So I'm probably going to wait a couple of days to put out this video and then we will see how we did. So without further ado, if I can get it open. Let's uh, do some pack opening, huh? All right, um, first impression, the cover's pretty dope. Uh, I like the cases a lot. They've definitely come a long way since the uh, older pre-releases that I used to do. Uh, I used to be pretty consistent. I started around New Forexia, and um, I've just kinda played on and off in pre-releases. So first and foremost, uh, Whoever the hell High King Kenrith is. Um, a pre-release deck? Oh, I'll tell you what. I'll build a pre-release deck after this. Um, one thing that you guys do know is that I'm definitely not a professional, so uh, take pretty much whatever I say with a grain of salt. So let's get at it. First off, this is my rare, which I think is pretty sick. Um, there was a lot of stuff about casting a Karn with this. Um, as funny as that would be, the art is also dope. Uh, the camera does a really good job of picking up the swords, but it really doesn't completely do it justice. This is a really, really sick promo. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that pack sealed and we'll set it right over here. Um, definitely wouldn't be good for the pre-release though. I definitely would not want that to be my bomb rare. Um, here's a code, uh, if you guys wanna go ahead and use that. Oh, just kidding. Here's a code, if you guys wanna use that, go right ahead, um, first person. And then um, you got a divider, keep your main board and your sideboard separate. Um, bring sleeves, don't need that. Just don't don't use that, bring sleeves. Get help. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six packs we got today. Uh, we got this lady, I don't know who she is. I'm sure she's a very nice lady. Uh, first pack I ever opened on camera, naturally. I can't get open very easily. Pretty par for the course, huh? All right. I should probably go through these kind of slow. I don't actually know any of the cards in this set. Um, so we have a Blood, Haze, Wolverine, Shining Armor, Runaway Together, a Tempting Witch. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, the food thing is pretty neat. Um, I do kind of like the mechanic. Uh, I think it's a really, really unique thing. Um, I think it's kind of cool that you get to feed cards. This is literally about feeding this person here. That's pretty sick. I love this. I think that Ginger Brute is awesome. I don't think it's necessarily a good card, but it's hilarious. And on top of that, it's food. I like the fact that you can eat other cards. That is so sick. Um, abundant. At least three black mana was spent to cast a spell. Locked Wayne Paladin enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one -one counter on it. I like the Menace. It's still a mechanic. I think it's really, really good. I think it's a lot of fun to play with, assuming you're not on the receiving end. Which is Cottage. We have... Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped, unless you control three or more swamps. Whenever it enters untapped, you may put target creature card from your graveyard at the top of your library. That's definitely not half bad. Um, well, feed the uh, wolf, get good results, I guess. What is that? An elf knight riding a fox, maybe? I don't know. Um, Silver Flame Ritual, the art on this card is pretty dope. And it appears to be pretty good. I'm putting a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature you control is really good. Um, it would probably be too good if it was an instant, but that's okay. Claim the Firstborn, okay, this is terrifying. Um, create or gain control of target creature with converted mana cost three or less until the end of turn, untap that creature. Cool. Uh, Lock Dragon is a really, really awesome card, I think. Um, I definitely think that it might end up creeping into standard. I'm a little bit behind on my standards, so I don't really know. Um, we're actually gonna go ahead and sort these by rarity, so we're just gonna put those there. Uh, Mad Hatter, all right. First rare is a Fabled Passage, which is kind of the haphazardly done Fabled Passage. Uh, what is this? This is a fetch land. Yeah, so that's pretty neat, I guess. Fetch lands are pretty cool. Uh, and then we have a food token. Uh, 
food definitely looks pretty good. Um, if I was going to be a creature and I'd eat something, that definitely doesn't look bad. Alright, um, pack number two. Go ahead and open this on camera. You know, don't want you guys to think that I got them sick, juicy repacks or anything. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, prize griffin. Got a wishful mirror folk. Um, there's some pretty cool mirror folks in this set. Oh, I did see that. Um, I do like the play off of Little Mermaid on this. It's really, really awesome. Uh, their attention to detail is great, just in general. Uh, a deck can have up to seven cards named Seven Dwarves. Again, the flavor is just through the roof in this set, um, especially if you like gingerbread. Uh, Rose Thorn Halberd enters the battlefield, attached to a non-human. Sick. Tempting Witch again. Uh, this is another one of those sanctuary lands. Um, they seem pretty good. The instant or sorcery going back to the top of your library is pretty nice. Uh, will see play? Probably not, but I don't really know. Okay, so some removal here. Okay, this is dope. Uh, well, the art is. I mean, a 5-5 a five, five for 6 actually isn't the end of the world in sealed uh, or draft. I mean, I imagine this is probably, is it's a pretty decent bomb. Scry effect's really, really cool. This is fine. Okay, yeah, see now we have another rule of law kind of effect here. Um, I love cards like this. Uh, I'm not particularly a stack player myself, but this is definitely pretty sick. Um, I do enjoy cards that do things like this. I looked ahead because I have no self-control, I'm sorry. Joust is cool. Uh, I really, really do like all the knight stuff. I think that's really, really awesome. Um, where we cast a creature card that has adventure draw. Okay. Uh, opportunistic dragon, huh? Whenever opportunistic dragon enters the battlefield, choose target human or artifact and opponent controls. For as long as a, as opportunistic dragon remains on the battlefield, gain control of that permanent. It loses all abilities, and it can't attack or block. Okay. As you guys saw, because again, I have no self control. Uh, we got a foil planes. It's actually really, really nice. Uh, I really, really like that a lot. We'll go ahead and put the foils. Uh, we'll put them up here. Hopefully we get a couple more. I know it's probably wishful thinking, but it'll be pretty dope if we did. Uh, more food. Uh, these bananas look like uh, those people who have like the world's longest fingernails and they coil around and stuff. So that's kind of gross. Moving on right along here. All right. Let's see here. So true love's kiss. Um, Exile turret artifact or enchantment draw a card. Uh, it's pretty terrible for four mana. Not a really big fan of that one. Um, another mermaid. We have a blood haze wolverine. Okay. Fortifying provisions. Remember, the battlefield create food. Yeah, food's good. A giant skewer. Okay. See, so now we're starting to get to these these uh, cards here. These weird kind of storybook cards. I think that they're really, really awesome. Uh, let's see here, so you have to cast the sorcery first, the adventure first. So you have to go adventuring to find the curious pair, I suppose. So the first thing that you get is a food token, and then after that, it is a 1-3 for 2 that you cast out of exile. Um, hopefully not to get eaten by the gingerbread man, but you never know. Wicked Guardian... Gingerbread Cabin, Steelgaze Griffin. I tend to look at blue cards, I'll be honest with you. I'm a little bit biased. Black's my favorite color, but I do really like a good blue card. Wildwood Tracker. Uh, yeah, seems pretty okay. Uh, Shambling Suit. Its power is equal to the number of artifacts or enchantments you control. Improbable Alliance. Oh, I started putting my... There we go. That's better. Back on track. Um, improbable Alliance. Uh, whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature with flying. Pay for loot. No, oh, I mean, that's not too bad. That's a pretty decent card. Um, all the glitters. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact or enchantment you control. This is actually a pretty decent card. Uh, this is the kind of thing that sometimes can creep into modern or just creep into other formats and you just kind of see it and you're like, Ugh. and then it ends up smacking you down. So that's pretty sick. Um... Aara, first of Locked Wayne. So this is triple black, so immediately I'm I'm into it. Um, she says, whenever she or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life, you can sacrifice another creature and draw a card. Okay, she's an elf. Um, the way that she kind of looks, I kind of thought that she was a vampire, 
which would kind of go with the flavor of sacrificing another creature, sucking some blood, or I mean, I guess maybe you can eat them. I don't really know what elves do in their spare time, but regardless, okay card. Uh, also, we have a giant token, so that's pretty cool. Uh, working his way up the beanstalk, I suppose. All right, three packs left. Thrill of Possibility. Silver Flame Squire. So, another one of these storybook cards. I like to look at these. Uh, target creature gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn, and then you want to tap it. And then it just is a 2 1. Well, so the front half's alright. It's an instant. That's pretty sick. Uh, the fact that you get to untap is awesome. But it is pretty crappy on the comeback. I mean, it is only a 2 1 for 2. So that's kind of whatever. It's not particularly on a curve or anything like that. So that's unfortunate. Again, I can't control myself. So we have a foil. I don't know what it is. But um, I hate whenever people see the foils in their packs and they don't acknowledge them. I'm not that guy. I looked ahead. I, I just can't control myself, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and hold them like this. So this is so tiny. Uh, enchanted creature gets neg two nego or neg six nego as long as a creature or as long as its controller has seven or more cards in the graveyard. So some crappy mill tech. Uh, Rimrock Knight is a plus two plus zero oh until the end of turn. Uh, Border Rush is pretty sick. And then it turns into a three one, and it can't block. But that's okay because if you're playing this card, you're probably not interested in block, and you're probably interested in beating face with a pickaxe from looks of it. So, honestly, I don't think this card's too bad. Uh, Reaper of Night. Oh, wow. The art on this is awesome. I didn't know about this card. This is sick. Uh, this is a 7 mana, 4, 5. First, you harvest the fear. So, uh, target opponent discards 2 cards, 4 mana. Then after that, whenever Reaper of Night attacks, if defending player has 2 or fewer cards in hand, it gains flying until the end of turn. This card actually isn't too bad. It's a pretty sick bomb. The discard two things pretty awesome. I like the whole story thing in general because you get to cast them once and then again later on. If you don't have anything to do, you can always have something to at least like look at. Um, I just noticed that whatever this person or whatever this this thing is behind the actual Reaper here, looks like it's made out of human heads and none of them look particularly happy. I imagine it's probably because their fear had been harvested. So unfortunate for those guys. Uh, Return to Nature is a pumpkin. It does pumpkin things. Great. Okay, Gingerbread Cabin um, is another one of these weird lands. And there's the battlefield untapped. You create a food token. I mean, that makes sense. Gingerbread, gingerbread Cabin is probably edible. Wicked Guardian. And there's the battlefield. May deal two damage to another creature you control. Draw a card. That's absolutely rude. Don't do that. Uh, blow your house down. This is pretty awesome. Again, the flavor is good. Uh, I love cards that destroy walls because, you know, everyone plays walls these days. Hypnotic Sprite is a 2 mana, 2 1. First, you got to. Oh, it's a counter spell, and then it turns into a dude. Wow, well, nothing like adding insult to injury, right, Blue? Savvy or Hunter. Whenever it attacks or blocks, create a food token. Sack 2, draw a card. Two food tokens. That's actually really, really awesome. For 3 mana, that's definitely not bad at all. The fact that it's green and black is kind of whatever, but I'm definitely a little bit biased because I played a lot of Jund and Modern, so that's a color combination that I'm, I'm here for. I'm, I'm here for it, you know? Fairy Vandal, the second card, get a 1-1 counter of Fairy Vandal. That can probably get pretty ridiculous. Okay, and my first Mythic Rare, actually, so that's pretty badass, is a Wrangle Master of Pranks. Wrangle is a 3-mana, four, or 4-mana, four 3-3, three, three, with Flying and Haste. Never it deals combat damage to a player. I can choose any number of the three modes here, which is each player discards a card, each player loses one life and draws a card, or each player sacrifices a creature. This is actually pretty sick. Uh, I don't really have any complaints about this. The fact that it has haste is awesome. Um, might creep into standard. I think it's really, really awesome. Now let's go ahead and see what that foil's about here. Whoop. Oh, you know, so I don't know anything about this set, but I know that this is worth a couple of bucks. It's a... 3 mana, zero, 0, Vigilance. It gets plus 1, plus 1 for each color among permanents you control, and then you can add one color. So it's basically kind of like a really, really, like, standard-friendly Bloom Tender, but that is absolutely badass and probably worth some money. I imagine that one's probably a hit. I think Rankle's probably a hit. I don't really know about the other ones because I haven't looked them up or anything. So, moving right along. Got two more packs yet. I'm actually super satisfied. I think that that Bloom Tender guy is really, really awesome just in general. I think it's a good card, good hit for sure. 
Probably not a hose. If it is, I'll be very surprised. So we got Mantle Tides, Raging Red Cap. I love Double Strike. It's one of my favorite mechanics, which is funny. So I'm not really like a combat kind of magic player. I generally like like combos and stuff, but I do I do like that. A giant Skewer is an artifact that is definitely a bad, bad day for that pig. Tall is a Beanstalk. Target creature gets plus, or enchanted creature gets plus three plus three reach and is also a giant. Very important. Whenever a borrow witches enters the battlefield, return target knight card from your graveyard to your hand. That's something. Weapon rack enters, you can move some count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything like this is just unfortunate. This card is gonna just kind of wheel and wheel and wheel. Beloved Princess is a 1 1 with lifelink, and it can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater. So that's kind of nice. And then we have a Vantress Paladin. Um, there's a battlefield with a 1 1 count on it. Uh, they really, really are into these uh, monocolored decks from the looks of it. Everything's kind of. Mono colored. There are fetch land or shock lands in standard right now, though. So I definitely do think that it's possible that there could be a little bit of synergy there. Um, unless they rotate. I really don't remember. Can you tell I don't really play standard very much anymore? Okay, so we have whatever this is. Um, I think that these are just like fancy cards. I don't know what they do or anything. I don't know like if these are worth more money. I definitely think that they're awesome looking. Like right, right off the bat, these things are sick looking for sure. Um, definitely pick yourself up a pack and hope that you got one because they're awesome. So mine is a three mana guy here. He's a two, two. Animating fairy. First is bring to life, three mana sorcery. Target non-creature artifact you control becomes a zero, zero artifact and you put four one, one counters on it. So you can tee up pretty much anything. Anything comes to work. Revenge of Ravens. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that player's control loses one life and gains one life. You know, whenever you have to read something out loud, I've noticed that especially on camera now that I've done this a whole one time, it really, really is hard to read on camera. And I don't know what that's about. This guy, I'm not even going to attempt to butcher the name. It's a five mana legendary and it, uncommon slot. Its power is equal to the number of cards in your hand. That's pretty neat. When Elnora, I see if Sir, Sir Elnora, I don't know, enters the battlefield, you draw a card and spells that target this fine human knight are two more to cast. That's actually not bad at all. Um, I don't really like cards that are kind of situational like that. Um, the, like this, for instance, depends on the number of cards in your hand. Especially in Sealed, if I'm drawing and I find this card and I have five mana, and I like rip this off the top to try to get back into the game, I'm obviously not going to be particularly pleased. Doom foretold. I think that means, do we have another foil? Oh my god, we're rolling in the foils. Holy shit. Doom foretold, a four mana enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. If the player can't, they discard a card, they lose two life, you draw a card, you gain two life, you create a two two knight creature token with vigilance, and then you sacrifice Doom foretold. So for, for four mana, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, they just you, you just rail them. You do eight million things to them, and that's incredibly rude, but awesome. All right, our foil is Righteousness, just your uh, pretty generic combat trick. The art is pretty uh, pretty cool. That's really about it. Um, it does combat stuff. All right, we got one more pack. So let's see. So far, definitely I'm pretty satisfied with this. Like I said, I will try to make some kind of sealed deck so we can see what they would look like. Uh, the old Crystal Slipper seems pretty cool. Uh, we have another one of this guy here, the card that only gets crappier. We have a Mantle of Tides, that card seems pretty okay. Another adventure. so we go on an adventure, we put two 1-1 counters on target creature, and then uh, we come back with an incredibly large tree, so that's nice. Trees are good. Now uh, we have another Reaper of Night, I think that this card's really, really awesome. Just the art, I don't really care if the card's good. I, I like black cards a lot. Black's my favorite color in the game. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uninspected Vision. Vision, five mana sorcery. Draw three cards. Okay. 
that's pretty cool. Um, if at least three mana was spent, scry three. That's, yeah, it's definitely pretty good. Signpost Scarecrow. Uh, I love Scarecrows in general. I wish that there were more Scarecrows in Magic. Bake into a Pie is pretty cool. It's a four mana... Four mana kill spell, which definitely isn't bad, especially in sealed. And you create a food token, so you get to kill a creature and then also feed your creatures. So that, I, all in all, I think that's probably a really, really good card for what they're trying to do here. Glass Casket. Whenever it enters the battlefield, exile to your creature and opponent controls with CMC three or less until this leaves. So this is just your basic half-assed O-ring effect. A giant opportunity, you may sack two foods if you do create a 7-7 seven, seven giant creature token. Otherwise, create three food tokens. So you can either get a boatload of food for everybody else, or you can make yourself a, an incredibly large giant. Alright. Wouldn't be a flavor set with witches in Warcraft and Wizardry and Knights without a cat. So, remember the old Cauldron Familiar Tat enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. You sacrifice a food, and you get to return it from the graveyard to the battlefield. And that's not too bad. It's a 1-1, so I'm probably not really going to be interested in giving it food just to come back and probably get bulldozed again. But, I mean, not bad. Nice cool, I guess. A Murderous Rider. So, uh, fun fact about me, I absolutely love zombie cards. Uh, I just love zombie everything. I've always been, like, pretty obsessed with all zombie-related things. So this is pretty cool. So first is Swift End, which is destroy target creature, planeswalker, and you lose two life. And then... Once he comes home from an adventure, clearly a little worse for the wear, he ends up a 2-3 th for 3 with lifelink. Whenever he dies, he goes back to the bottom of the library. That's awesome because it means that you can also take him on an adventure more than once. So, uh, to me, again, good card. Uh, Blood Haze Wolverine is our foil. Um, we definitely have four foils in this, six packs, four foils. I mean, obviously, that's not really like something you should expect. I don't want you to look at this and be like, wow, man, this is awesome value. Pure release packs are cool, but don't assume that everything's going to happen like that. This is an oddly specific token. Uh, I imagine some kind of card makes this. I don't know what it is, but it's cool. So to recap, let's go ahead and um, move the tokens and everything out of the way here. We'll go ahead and get the uncommons, except for uh, there she blows. Okay. So. To review, we got this really, really awesome uncommon. I don't know anything about it, but it seems pretty cool. We got the Fable Passage first. The Fable Passage, I think, is definitely going to end up decent. It, it is a fetch land of sorts, so that's really, really awesome. I feel like this is probably going to be a hit. Now, again, this is strictly speculation. I'm going to check the prices in a couple of days. This is probably a hit. That, probably not so much. I definitely don't feel particularly great about this. This is definitely going to be a hit. This is... So I think it's so far probably, I don't know what this is going to be like, probably hit hose hose. This is probably a hit because it's a kill spell for three mana. It's an instant. That's awesome. The small drawback of losing two life is not really that big a deal. It never really stopped anybody from playing any other cards like that before. Cards like um, Anguished on Making have made you lose life and no one really seems to care. Uh, so then we got Doom Foretold, which really, really just rails whoever it affects, and uh, our good friend, our good mythical friend, Rankle. Uh, aside from this tree folk here, uh, the foals aren't really anything to go home about. There's really no big deal. They're going to go in a box and probably get traded away for bulk. But this Fabro Elder is really awesome, and I think that it's really, really going to be an all-star and standard. So this is the first iteration of me opening up something random and rambling so hopefully you guys are enjoying the content um i'll be making more like this um like and please subscribe uh, i don't really have all that many of those so really gotta work on that so uh yeah thanks see you